giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now. FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, folks, and welcome to our week four episode of the Mouth of the South recap. This week, we'll be recapping the events that took place in Texas, Missouri, and Louisiana, as well as looking ahead to the week five events in Tennessee and Texas. We'll also review the South region top 10 as voted by you, the viewers, and spend a couple of minutes discussing a special celebrity appearance that occurred at the Greenville District event. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Mark O'Gara. I'm Jeff. And I'm Michael Ray. All right, before we dive into the event recaps this week, we want to talk about an awesome giveaway on today's show, a limited edition fun logo mug, courtesy of the awesome folks at Redfish Robotics. Let's bring on Tyler to tell you how you can win some so that you too may enjoy your beverage of choice in style. <laughs> so we're continuing the, uh, the mug train here and uh, new keywords we're going to do for every show. So once again, thanks to Redfish Robotics for these cool limited edition mugs. Uh, if you're interested in winning, uh, we're going to do tacos, right? I think tacos is the keyword for our South show today. So uh, type tacos in chat, and that's your uh, opportunity uh, to win. And go once again, go check out all the mugs that Redfish Robotics has to offer at tinyurl.com forward slash Redfish Robotics. Uh, once again, uh, tacos is your uh, keyword to type in. We'll draw near the end of the show. Enjoy, everybody. Cool. Thank you, sir. So the South region had four great events take place last weekend, and we saw the level of overall competition really begin to rise. Let's first head to the Pelican State and see how Bayou Regional played out. Take it away, Jeff. All right. Thanks, Marco. Uh, for our first event of week four, we're heading to the swamps of Kenner, Louisiana, where 59 teams battled out at the Bayou Regional, even though Blue Alliance says it was 60. Don't know what happened there. Um, after 89 qualification matches, 14 teams finished with a ranking score of 2.0 or higher, just attesting to the competitiveness of this event. And the top three seeds all tied with a ranking score of 2.77. In the end, 364 Team Fusion took the number one seed due to earning 219 cargo points. They would go on to select 1421 Team Chaos as their first pick and round out their alliance with 3991 Night Vision. Uh, alliance number one would breeze through quarterfinals and semifinals, beating out the number eight and number four alliances uh, with an average winning margin of 27 points. Uh, they would go on to face the number three alliance of 2992, the SS Prometheus, 3039 Wildcat Robotics, and 3946 Tiger Robotics. Finals matches would play out no differently as alliance number one would just barely beat out alliance number three with scores of 93-83 and 88-81. Congratulations to the winning alliance of 364, 1421, and 3391. Excuse me. Congratulations to 7661 on the Rookie All-Star Award and to 6025 Adroit Androids for their Engineering Inspiration Award. Finally, a huge congratulations to 4013 Clockwork Mania on their Regional Chairman's Award. And for our second event recap this week, we will be covering the Greater Kansas City Regional. Once again, this week, several of Kansas City's finest were on display. Team 1986, Team Titanium, 5801, CTC, Inspire, and 1730, Team Driven, all had strong showings last week at the Heartland Regional. Other notable teams include 2410, Metal Mustangs, and Team 1806, SWAT. Rankings at this event came down to hab climbing. Once again, it was 1986 and 5801, whose fast hab climbs landed them into the number one and two seeds. However, this week their roles were reversed as 1986 picked first and opted not to reform their previous Heartland Regional Alliance, instead going for Team 3284 Camdenton Lasers. Uh, captaining the number two alliance, 5801 picked up 1730 and 2357. The final pick of the draft, which was 1806 SWAT, forming an insane alliance on paper with 1986 and 3284, even though 1806 wasn't as strong as years past. The quarterfinals and semifinals went exactly as expected, with zero upsets and no matches going into tiebreaker matches. The number four alliance of 2410, 
2352 and 7064 were able to give the number one alliance trouble in their semifinal matchup, but it was 1806's smart defense that held them off. In the finals, it was previous alliance partners 1986 and 5801 who now captain opposing alliances in a much anticipated face off. The first miles finals match was as close as it gets as number one alliance by one by only one point due to a hatch panel placed by 5801 not being counted because it wasn't held on by the Velcro. I'm sorry, hook and loop tape. In the second finals match, the number two alliance brought it together and outscored the number one alliance 70 to 60, bringing the series to a tiebreaker match. Again, it was the number two alliance who took this match thanks to six penalty points, giving them a 71 to 67 victory. Congratulations to the winning alliance of 5801, 1730, 2357, and 1785. Thanks to wild cards and previous qualifications, the entire final, finalist alliance also punched their tickets to Worlds. We have a gold-silver cling bling for 1730 for winning engineering inspiration, and huge congratulations to 2723 Team Rocket for winning their team's first ever Chairman's Award. All right, thanks, Jeff. Let's head deep into Texas for the Del Rio First in Texas District event. Del Rio imposed some interesting travel, travel challenges for teams attending as the only team close to the venue was hosting Team 4063 Tricks Are For Kids. Even with these challenging travel plans, 4063 did a fantastic job hosting the event and made every feel, team feel at home. 42 teams played at the event on Saturday and Sunday, resulting in 80 qualification matches. In the 80 matches, 39 level three climbs occurred, with, which resulted in 8% of the matches having a bonus RP. Climbing rates were 3% lower at this tournament than the overall average for week four events. Furthermore, not a single rocket was completed during the entire event, although one match did feature a bonus RP for a rocket due to knocking off a hatch panel from the opposing alliance. Qualification matches finished with 1477, Texas Torque taking the first ranked position. Torque relied heavily on their consistent and reliable level three climb all weekend and frequently pulled ahead of their competitors at the last second with their climb. Going 11-0-1, they then selected Team 5892 Energy Heroes as their first pick. Ranking second from Austin, Texas was Team 6377 Howdy Bots. Howdy Bots ranked first in Austin but exited elimination matches early. This time, they were ready to take home the gold using their consistent level 3 suction cl climber and efficient cargo ship cycles. With their first pick, they then selected rookie 7521 Ultimate Robotics. Ultimate was one of the few robots that could play on the rocket during the weekend and com complemented 6377's cargo ship play very nicely. Quarterfinals went as expected as all four higher seeded alliance moved on into semis. In semifinals, the number three seed led by 4063 bowed out to the number two seed in two matches. On the other side, things got interesting with the first and fourth alliances. 1817, the Yano Estacado Robo Raiders ended qualification matches seeded fourth. And 1817 had some very interesting and powerful approach to last, the last few years' games. They decided to go full on defense every match, and it was some of the best defense I'd ever seen. With their first pick, they took a gamble and picked 6800 Viperbots Valor, who started off Sunday morning ranked 40th. Their last pick was 6315 Code Error 404, an efficient cargo ship robot. That number four alliance beat the number one alliance in two matches, with 1477 unfortunately sitting dead on the field in both matches after potential wiring jostled loose with their battle against the defense of 1817. 6800 and 6315 handled the scoring and the results were 64 to 46 and 81 to 43. The finals went to three matches. Match one went to the fourth alliance, 74 to 62. In match two, it went to the second alliance, 7068, where six penalty points determined the winner. And finally, the third match resulted in the second alliance led by HowdyBots winning 79-69, where scored game elements were completely identical, and it was the level two starting HAB configuration that won it for the second seed. Congratulations to winners 6377, 7521, and 7088 for winning the event, as well to 1477 for their chairman's banner, and 5427 Steel Talents for their Engineering Inspiration Award. Marco, on to you. Thanks. Uh, our last recap of this week takes us to the cozy hamlet of Greenville, Texas, where a district banner Pride and state championship qualification were all on the line for 42 of Texas's best. The Robo Wrangler Den split pit setup was certainly not ideal, and the queuing path for one half of the pits was particularly challenging. But as is the case at any great event, volunteers were fantastic, and the event was very well run, leading to a great experience for all the teams. 
This event was lauded as perhaps the toughest field that the first in Texas district would see all year, and those predictions appear to be confirmed early on. As the tournament kicked off, it only took as far as qualification match number two for 3310 Blackhawk Robotics to set the tone as they promptly turned in a 4RP performance. They would also go on to flirt with what was, at the time, the world high score as they teamed up first with 2468 and then with 3005 Robochargers to put up scores of 97 and 98 points respectively in back-to-back -back quals matches. Also coming out of the gate hot at the event were 2468 Team Appreciate and 3874 Spectrum, all of whom would look very sharp throughout and go on to complete the Rocket RP multiple times throughout qualification matches. While the Rocket RPs remained somewhat uncommon, the HAB docking RP was downright commonplace. This event saw just over 41% of the alliances in qualifications earn that bonus RP, a rate nearly double that was double what we've seen on average in the prior three weeks of competition. To really drive the point home of how tough this field was, when the last qualification match ended on Saturday, this event had put up more unicorn matches than all other seven Texas district events combined. As Alliance selections got underway, it was 2468 Team Appreciate and their wheelie poppin' blindingly fast elevator having robot Linda who claimed the number one spot. Their in-depth scouting analysis indicated they should probably select 3310 Blackhawk, which they did, and then added 7708 Tiger Nation to round out the number one alliance. The number two alliance was captained by 5414 Paradox, who selected fellow Houston Areaites 3847 Spectrum and then 5888 Meta Robotics. Elimination matches saw some tight matches overall, but the favorites simply had too much firepower and the elimination, elimination brackets saw the higher seeded alliances march through to the finals. In finals one, the number two alliance hung in there throughout and matched or bettered the 2468 and 3310 alliance in Sandstorm, Hab Climb, and Cargo Points, but maybe let that match get away as some late match miscues in the form of cargo scored on unhatched bays, multiple drop panels, and a missed Hab 2 attempt all resulted in the blue alliance missing out on some critical points down the stretch. While the Red Alliance did have some miscues of their own, as 3310 appeared to go to the wrong height when attempting their HAB 2 climb, the speed and accuracy from the number one alliance in placing hatch panels proved to be the difference in the match. Their ability to score the hatch panels was so dominant that they actually employed a strategy of only utilizing three null hatch panels all throughout the elimination rounds. In the end, the Red Alliance would take Finals 1 with a score of 76 to 69. Finals 2 saw the defensive efforts ramp up, but the number one seed was more efficient in their scoring this time around and really held the lead throughout, cruising, cruising to a Finals 2 win with an 82-62 victory. Congratulations to 3310 Blackhawk and 2468 Team Appreciate, both picking up their second district wins of the year, as well as rookie 7708 on their blue banner in their very first ever event. Way to set the bar high, Tiger Nation. Finally, congratulations to Team 3735 Vortex for their Chairman's Award. All right, thank you very much, much, Mar I hit the mute, <laughs> I hit the mute button or the video button instead of the mute button. It's all going downhill. Anyway, moving on uh, now to a topic we really wanted to talk through last week, but we had way too many awesome events to discuss. So now let's go with a, a better late than never approach and bask in the awesomeness of the latest iteration of the 118-148 Prank War, Operation Movie Magic. If you're not familiar on the history of the Prank War, feel free to check out JVN's blog. So we've all seen the video. What do you guys think? <laughs> I have to say the first time I looked at this video, it was a good like 90 seconds before my, frame, my brain processed what the hell was going on, what I was looking at. <laughs> Everyone I was with me at the time had the same reaction. Uh, it's just awesome. I love everything about it. And anyone that was at the Greenville event this past weekend actually got to see drive through up close, not too close, uh, as indicated by the luxurious velvet ropes that were surrounding this robot. Um, I, I think it's great. I, I loved everything about this video. Yeah, so I've been following the prank war for a while. It's absolutely hilarious every time I walk through the pits at an event and I'm just like, what is going on here? Um, but my favorite part of the video was just the absolute attention to detail, including um, the blue banner that uh, 148 put in their shop to commemorate the uh, 2012 Einstein disaster, to put it lightly that said didn't move at all on Einstein in 2012. I thought that was a nice uh, little bit of a little bit of uh, poke of fun, I guess. Um, but just the attention to detail was absolutely incredible. Yeah, I love the, the fishing line effects, uh, the uh, drone camera, whatever turnaround, everything about it, I thought was was really cool. And um, now we sit back and wait and see, uh, as I said, your turn 118. So we'll see what they come up with next.
uh, Marco to touch on that a little bit. I think my favorite part of that whole scene was when they roll the disc across the floor. Uh, <laughs> I just I watched that a couple times over and over because I thought that was that was absolutely hilarious. So cool. Um, well, now that week four is behind us, uh, let's take a look and see who you, beloved fans of fun, voted as the top teams in the South region this week. Uh, coming in at the number one spot, we have 3310 Black Hawk Robotics, followed up by their uh, alliance partners, alliance captains, 2468 Team Appreciate. In the third spot, we have 364 Team Fusion. Number four goes to 1986 Team Titanium followed by 3847 Spectrum holding down the number five spot. In the sixth hole, we have 624 Kryptonite. Seventh place goes to 4256 Cyborg Cats. Eighth place is 1477 Texas Torque, followed by 5414 Paradox. And rounding out the top 10 is 1730 Team Driven. Um, if you see something you don't agree with out there, then go vote, vote, vote. Uh, meanwhile, anyone have any big disagreements with the rankings for this week? Um, not really any disagreement here. Um, 2468, obviously a very, very fast robot this past week. Uh, their continuous improvement uh, has been Appreciate's game this year, just every tournament making bigger and bigger changes. And then also, I just wanted to point out that we, we played with 1817 this week, and I really thought that they deserved some kudos um, for having some amazing defense. It's not, not very often you see strategies like that. Yeah, and I, I agree with you there. Um, with 1817, I think they should have had a position on this list. I am a bit biased, though, because I did help them out a little bit uh, last <laughs> last year, the latter half of last year. But um, also, I do think that there's a bit of people maybe voting for their own teams before uh, um, other teams. And because of 1817's small team size, they actually only have nine students right now. Um, that might contribute to why they're not higher on this list. Marco, cool. anything no. from you? Uh, no, I, I think that uh, I think probably the one change I would make, I think uh, appreciate giving them the nod in the number one spot, being the alliance captain there. But I think everybody here is, is pretty worthy of their spot. All right. Well, to end our show, let's take a look at the events coming up this week. Uh, let's start off with the Smoky Mountain Regional. Jeff, on to you. All right. So for our first event in week five, we're heading to the Marble City of Knoxville, Tennessee, where 52 teams will go for the gold. The clear favorite for this event is Hall of Fame Team 2614 Mountaineer Area Robotics. However, 4265 Secret City Wildbots has a legacy to continue after winning the 2018 Smoky Mountains Regional, beating out uh, 2614. Additionally, two international teams are looking to snag a blue banner. Team 2386 Trojans visiting from the Ontario District and Team 3011 Robo Warriors all the way from Germany will be looking to take home the winner's banner as well. The Chairman's Award is wide open since 2614 is already a Hall of Fame team and 4013 already won the Chairman's Award at the Bayou Regional. Plenty of teams will be looking to earn this prestigious award. So, Michael, there's been a lot going on in South Texas recently. Uh, what's happening down in Pasadena? Well, if you hadn't heard, there was a pretty big fire in Deer Park, Texas, which is very close to Pasadena. So we were monitoring that, and uh, fortunately, uh, everything is kind of passed through. So this week's Pasadena District event, uh, previously known as the Lone Star South Regional, um, is going to be on and as scheduled. Flying by as the number one team for this event is 118, the Robonauts. To no surprise, 118 statistically is 10 points better than any other team at the event and will be looking to collect as many unicorns as they can. They will be looking for their third banner and securing their spot as one of the top robots in the state. In number two position is 231 High Voltage. With a slick painted black robot and green intake wheels, 231 will be looking to increase their rocket play while maintaining dominance of the cargo ship. High Voltage won the Motorola, Motorola Quality at their last event and exited in the semis at Channel View. Statistically, the number three position is 6800 Viperbots Valor. With strangely the exact same color scheme as 231, Valor will look to continue playing like they did in elimination matches at Del Rio and maybe fill a few rockets on the way. Finally, in slots 4 and 5 are 5261 Cybershock and 2587 Disco Bots. The pair both have similar play styles with consistent cargo ship play, level 2 start and climb, and the ability to score low on the rocket. All right, thanks, Michael. So for our last preview this week, we're going to take a look at the action that is coming to the Emmett J. Conrad High School in Dallas, Texas, home of Team 3005, the Robo Chargers. 38 teams will be competing, and as always, there are a few stars at this event, so let's take a look at them. 
the obvious favorites at Dallas is Team 148, the Robo Wranglers, who are coming into the event having last competed in Amarillo Week 2, where they ranked 1 and swept through Elims for a relatively easy win. I'm very excited to see what changes 148 has made to their robot drive through I mean, overhang, to put them ahead of the rest of the competition. 148 aren't the only members of Hashtag Team IFI attending Dallas. 1296 of Full Metal Jackets are looking to improve upon their Rank 6 outing at Amarillo, where they also picked up the Entrepreneurship and Safety Award. Uh, 1296 are the pretty heavy favorites to pick up the Chairman's Award at this event. Additionally, Team 3676 Warrior Robotics had a strong outing in Austin Week 1, where they ranked 3rd but were unable to make it out of semifinals. If they can keep firing on the cylinders that they were in Austin, then I'd expect them to make it much further than they did. The biggest factor at Dallas is going to be the third robots. There's a very big performance drop after the top five robots at the event, which could lead to a death by serpentine situation for the one and two alliances. Overall, Dallas will be a very interesting event that could see some pretty big upsets. Cool. Thank you, Jeff. That just about does it for us this week. But before we go, let's hang out some sweet, sweet, sweet uh, swag and draw for the winner of our fun logo mug giveaway. Tyler, take it away. Yep. Uh, once again, uh, thanks again to Redfish Robotics for giving away these sweet mugs. We're giving away during uh, pretty much all of our recap shows uh, that are uh, US and Canada. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're interested in winning tacos was the keyword, you do have to make sure you click the follow button for the channel. Or if you choose to subscribe and help support us, you get five times luck. Uh, the winner for today show is going to be Penguin P. Butter. All right. Penguin P. Butter. Congratulations. <laughs> nice name, by the way. Uh, let's get lots of rigged emotes in chat. Uh, Penguin P. Butter is a subscriber, so we clearly have rigged it for Penguin P. Butter to win. So congratulations. Please make sure you reach out to First Updates now with your mailing information, first name, last name, address, city, state, all that fun stuff. So congratulations once again. All right. Thanks to everyone who has watched. If you want more First Robotics in your life and like what we do, all we ask is that you let others know about this show and that this is the place to go to for more FRC in their lives. If you got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted to have you on board. Stay tuned after the show to catch some Behind the Bumpers interviews hosted by yours truly with the awesome people at 7179 Crossfire and 2714 BBQ. On behalf of myself, Jeff, Michael, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in the chat. Our next show is We the North. Talk to you next week on our Mouth of the South recap. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.